Today I'm going to show you my all-time absolute favorite art supplies. I divided my art supplies into three categories for this video and each category has its own little tray in my trolley in which I store my art supplies. There's drawing and paper, there's painting and paint supplies and there's a third section for adding texture and miscellaneous art supplies. Let's start with my favorite sketchbook. This is the Hahnemühle Nostalgia sketchbook. They have several sizes. I also have another size of this one. And this has been my favorite sketchbook for a long, long time. I use it to sketch out my ideas and thumbnails for illustrations, but I also use it for color pencils. The Hahnemühle Nostalgia book has 190 grams paper. This one is A4 size. Paper is natural white. I use it for sketching, but I can also create finished pencil illustrations which I really love. I have finished several of these sketchbooks through the years. I think it will remain my favorite kind because it's bound. I cannot take any pages out of it, but I do have a great solution for that. I also have a block of separate sheets, which is very handy when I want to take out the paper of the sketchbook. I really like the quality and the softness of the paper. It doesn't have a lot of texture, but it's not too soft. And I also really like the thickness. I make finished illustrations in the sketchbook. I have made graphite illustrations. I even added a little bit of paint to the sketchbook this year. And I also create color pencil illustrations. I do actually have another sketchbook that is one of my absolute favorites. And I also want to recommend here, which is the Letto Wish sketchbook. And if only for its super nice design. It's really one of the most, no, I think the most pretty sketchbook I've seen. And of course, you can't only pick a sketchbook because it looks pretty. Well, I, well, maybe you can, but. <laughs> this paper is actually really good for drawing as well. And I think it is my second favorite sketchbook of all times. I have it in two colors. I used to have a black one, which I gifted to a friend. The black one is also very, very nice. I really like to make pencil sketches and finished pencil illustrations. I've lately been using the Stettler Mars Lumograph, which you may have seen in my previous art supply shopping video. I also like the pencil by Hartmuth. I may pronounce that wrong. For sketching and drawing, I really like to use very soft pencils. And this is a hard pencil, but it's mostly used when I create a painting and I just want to have uh, soft lines that will not be visible after I add paint. For rough sketches and uh, finished illustrations, I really do like to use very soft pencils. So this is a 4B. I also use 6B and 3B. Well, just all of the Bs. When drawing with graphite, I also use these blending sticks. You can see very well which ones are new and which ones are worn out. <laughs> you can tear the paper off to have a fresh new layer. They come in several sizes and I use these blending sticks to create uh, some softer textures in my pencil drawings. So they are very nice to use for shading and for smooth textures. In Dutch they are called Dusselaar. The latest one that I bought is from Stadler and I really do not think that the brand is very important here. They are quite inexpensive and still they add a lot of extra value to the illustration. So I really recommend these. If you've seen my art supply shopping videos, you must have seen these ones come along. I think I have shared them in each of the art supply shopping videos that I filmed up until now. And that is because I really, really recommend them. It is the Tombow Mono Zero Elastomer Eraser. And it's a really tiny eraser. As you can see here, it's so very tiny. It's just 2.3 millimeters and can erase the tiniest details in your drawings, which I absolutely love. I use them to erase those tiny details, but I also add them to white out some areas. So if I want to add some white sparkles, I can easily erase some bits of pencil with the Tombow Mono Zero. You can purchase refills for these. You can use them for a very, very long time. 
I think I've had these ones for years. I do have two of them because I think it's convenient. I can leave one in my art studio and one I can take along whenever I'm going to draw somewhere on location. They really are some of the art supplies that I use the most in my sketchbook. For painting, I use Arches watercolor paper. I absolutely love this paper, just like the sketchbook. It is very soft, but not too soft. It's not very textured, which I like for my illustrations. I don't really like painting on paper that has too much texture in it. This is uh, the grain satiné, which means that it is very soft. It's hot pressed and it's 300 grams paper. They come in all kinds of different sizes. I do have this really big block you can see. It's the largest one that I've ever owned. It's 64 by 61 centimeters, which is 18 by 24 inch. And I use this large one for picture book illustrations. I can get two spreads out of this size for my picture book. For my smaller illustrations, I have this A4 sized one. And I also now since recently have this A5 sized one. So I really love that there's a variety in sizes which I can choose from and it's just my absolute favorite paper. For arches, I actually had another favorite watercolor paper. It is called Canson Moulin du Roi. Um, if I pronounce that correctly. The texture and quality of that paper was very similar to this one. There were a lot of supply problems here in the Netherlands for that paper. So then I searched for another paper and I landed on Arches. I don't know if the Quinçon Moulin du Roi is available anywhere else, but if it is in your country, I would highly recommend picking that one up as well. On Instagram, I got a lot of questions about the masking tape I use. I actually just use painter's tape. I do not get this masking tape in an art supply store. It's called TCX masking tape. I picked the sensitive one, which actually works great with my watercolor paper. In the Netherlands, I bought this in the action store. It's a really nice quality uh, masking tape, I think. The only downside to it, I would say, is that it is purple so at one point in time I just must go to the art supply store and get some white masking tape. We have this effect of colors appearing differently when working with a colored masking tape if that makes any sense so it's actually better to use a white tape so you don't get distracted and the purple won't add to the color scheme. This tape actually doesn't work all that well in my sketchbook um, so I'm still looking for a nice masking tape for my sketchbook. If you have any recommendations, let me know. I heard a lot of people recommend to use a blow dryer before removing masking tape. With my watercolor paper, I never have a problem with damaging the paper when using this masking tape. But I can use that technique for my sketchbook. So if you have uh, problems with removing masking tape and damaging paper, maybe you can try that blow drying technique. I still have to try it, so I would love to hear your experiences with that. In the past, I used to add little paper boats and planes to my illustrations, making it a little bit of a 3D kind of artwork. And nowadays, I still like to use some paper details, especially when I'm working with collage. I just like the look. And it's, of course, an inexpensive material that will create a little bit of an interesting look for illustrations. I love to experiment with that, so I thought I do need to add this to my favorite art supplies. This is another book that I use for painting and I've been using it only since recently. You can see a video in which I fill this entire book. It's the Hanemühle The Zigzag book and it's great for drawing but also for painting and I actually worked with watercolors inside of this book. You can see how I created these illustrations in my most recent video. Before I started painting, I wasn't 100% sure if it would hold paint, but it did so amazingly. I really love the texture of the paper. I didn't run into any problems while painting. And I also used a little bit of paper here, as you can see. I really love this little book. They come in several sizes as well. And I'm sure that I want to fill a lot more of them in the future. This must be one of the art supplies that I've had for the longest time, I think. I already had it when I was painting in my previous art studio. It's the Windsor and Newton black box and it's full of watercolors. Please don't be startled <laughs> because I haven't really cleaned mine for a very long time. And since I use a lot of green and blue, I actually end up using this paint often as well. 
Um, in my recent art supply shopping spree, I added three new colors, which you may have seen. I just absolutely love these watercolors. I never had uh, any reason to try different ones because I just really love them very much. Since a year, I started to move towards gouache paint a little bit more, but I still love my watercolors very, very much. The step from watercolors to gouache paint was actually very simple because gouache has a lot of resemblance to watercolors, especially when you use a little bit more water. So this is the gouache paint that I'm currently using the most. It's a Holbein Artist's Gouache and I purchased mine at the Dutch art supply shop called Splendid but they have it everywhere online as well. My husband gave this for my birthday. It has 18 colors. I really, really love them. Such a nice gouache paint. It's very, very soft. As I mentioned in a previous video, it's buttery smooth. The colors are very vibrant and I just, yeah, I just, I've fallen in love with these paints. Previously I was using Talent's gouache paint which I also still like very much. So there's nothing wrong with this paint at all, but I just was sold when I tried the Holbein gouache. I think this has a slightly more expensive price range. It's water-based gouache paint, so not the acrylic version. I know Holbein also has acrylic gouache paint. I actually really like water-based gouache. I like that I can activate it again when it's dry and uh, add a lot of fun textures in that way and it's a little bit less permanent and more forgiving when making mistakes. These are the new colors that I added and I really love them all. Now that I've gotten used to uh, gouache paint, I am using it for my picture book illustrations and for the print of the month for Patreon. I try to use it as often as I can because I love it so much. For painting, I mostly use Da Vinci brushes. They are synthetic brushes, so they don't have animal hairs, which I absolutely like. I mentioned in a previous video that I'm not very good with brush maintenance. I did receive some very nice recommendations for new brushes in my previous art supply shopping video, which I still have to try out. The Princeton brush was recommended to me and I am going to look for that one. I do have the Da Vinci brushes in all kinds of different sizes, ranging from the larger ones to the very small ones. And I use the small ones a lot for my illustrations because I generally do not work on a very large format and I do like to add tiny details to my illustrations. I use my watercolor brushes for both gouache and watercolor paint, by the way, and they are perfect for that. I do like to store my brushes within this bin whenever I think of it because, as mentioned, I don't have a track record for brush upkeep. In the past, I've purchased uh, this art bin in uh, a local art supply store and it's perfect for storing brushes. One of the problems I have with brushes is that whenever I start painting and wetting my paper, there's a lot of dust on the paper. Each time I get frustrated with that and I think, oh, next time I do need to make sure there's no dust. Well, this is one of the things that helps with that because when you store your brushes just sitting up in a container, they do collect dust and that will mix with the water and it's just really inconvenient if you ask me. So um, if you do take care of your brushes, which I plan to do, this container is actually a very convenient tool to have in your art studio. I really love to use my porcelain palette. I've seen it uh, pop by in a lot of artist videos and I just had to have one, mainly because it just looks so nice and pretty and uh, I love all things that have to do with flowers. I do like the quality. It's very, very easy to clean. I think it was gifted to me by my brother for Christmas one year. I wouldn't say that I only use my colored pencils for texture or as a miscellaneous item, but I do use watercolor and gouache paint the most when it comes to coloring. I sometimes do create illustrations only with colored pencil, but I most often use my colored pencils to add texture to paint and to add fun little details. So that is why it's in this category. Without further ado, I use Faber-Castell Polychromos color pencils. I have 120 colors. I really hate that I did this. I'm someone who loves to be organized. I do love everything to be visually very tidy, but still when drawing this happened. So they are all mixed up. 
as you can see it's really it's really not it's not looking all that pretty i intuitively grab colors and when i'm in the zone and working in the flow state i just don't take the time to put all of the pencils back into the right position so actually i have been thinking about just putting all of the colors into containers. I've seen some artists do that and to have like the yellow tints and the, the reds and the blues in their own little container. I think I'm going to do that. Also will make the colors a lot more accessible, but okay. Organization aside, I really, really do love these color pencils. I previously worked with color pencils that were either too soft and too creamy or they were uh, very hard, like almost chalky. And this is just the right consistency. They are perfect for creating colored illustrations and also perfect for adding details. There's also one item that I do use a lot when working with pencils and I almost forgot that one. I do use a sharpener with my pencils, both for graphite pencils and for my colored pencils. And I really like to keep the points very sharp whenever I'm drawing. So this is also an item that I will put on the list. It may seem insignificant, but without this sharpener, I would be lost. I think there are larger sets out there. So maybe one day I will splurge and get a larger set. I will let you know whenever I do. These are some other items that I love to create textures with. Some very inexpensive brushes. They are also Da Vinci brushes. And this one is just a painter brush. And you guessed it, this one is just something I picked up at the... Uh, <laughs> something that um, is used for painting walls. Um, a paint roller, I think. These things are really inexpensive, but they create lovely textures. This is a palette knife from Talent, so I think this will be a little bit more expensive than the other things. It comes in a set of three different sizes. It's really nice to add uh, gouache paint and build up a little bit of texture. These brushes I often use to add fur textures to my animals. These supplies I often use for backgrounds to create textures in the background. It's one of the most fun parts of painting, I think. Because the hairs are very uh, sturdy and hard, I use these ones to to, um, add some paint splatters to my paintings as well which I really love. So these are just some miscellaneous items I use to create textures with. Then we have oil pastels by Karen Dash. I recently tried out a lot of pastels. These ones are my absolute favorites when it comes to adding texture to my artworks. I haven't used them a lot to create standalone illustrations. I have made one illustration in which I use them a little bit more than usual, but I do like them mostly to create textures. And as you can see, I've used the white a lot. They are very creamy and they create a lovely texture for my backgrounds. Um, I'm really glad that I've picked them up. And I'm also very interested to add some colors to this range. So more colors are hopefully coming in the future. One last miscellaneous item that I do want to mention was this glue. It's not about the brand of the glue, I think. It's just a type of glue that I want to recommend because I know there's a lot of brands that carry Buchbinder Lime. Buchbinder Lime, it is a German word. <laughs> Bookmaking glue, something like that. It's a glue that works very, very well to glue paper. And I use it for my collage paint, for example, the newspaper details that I add to my work. It's just proven to be very valuable within my art practice. I use it with a very, very small brush. I can add pieces of collage paper, uh, painted pieces of paper and create collage paintings. It doesn't damage the paper. It dries really fast. And when it dries, it doesn't leave um, a, a yellow color or anything like that. So I do really like it. I did read on the back that it can produce an allergic reaction. So if you are going to use this glue, please do check that you take all the necessary precautions. I haven't had an allergic reaction to it yet, but you never know.